Hey there fellow astronomers, uh, so Buddy and I are looking at doing some remote imaging and uh, we just picked up the new uh, Stellaview 80mm scope and uh, we also have a uh, Stellaview 132 and an uh, Explorer Scientific uh, 127 so we needed uh, a way to automate the, uh, the covers on those to do some remote imaging so anyhow we kind of looked online for some options and uh, there are obviously commercial um, options that you can get. Most of them actually have flat fields built into them, which um, we actually may add this to a, a future revision, uh, but they were also mostly ridiculously expensive, like four or five, six hundred dollars for a flipping automated scope cover, which is just absurd. Um, also a lot of them, uh, instead of having a double post, just had a single post. I'd actually started with that. This was for the 132 scope, so clearly a whole lot bigger than, than the 80. But having that just on a single post, no way. It was far too flimsy. So we started looking around. There was a gentleman that uh, has a, a scope posted, a similar kind of design on Thingverse, and had a little video on it that I really, that was my light bulb moment, that, ooh, went, hey, that's pretty cool. Um, it wasn't bad, but there was a lot of things that I thought I could improve. Uh, so I sat down with my kids this week, and we kind of went through this, and made my 16 year old do a bunch of 3D CAD stuff. He actually did the first, all the first preliminary CAD stuff and I ended up spending the last uh, couple days just tweaking things and getting it just right. Um, but in the end, this has turned out really nice. Um, the servos, just so you know, if you're gonna build one, uh, this is dirt cheap. It's 15 bucks for the servo, it's five bucks for the, uh, the controller and there's about two bucks worth of 3D printed parts depending on how big of a scope you're gonna print. Um, the classic servos, uh, these only go plus or minus 90 degrees, um, so 180 total. I wanted to be able to swing the full 270 degrees, which also was another thing. All the commercial ones like stop like here, you know, at, at just over 80 degree, 180 degrees, which I thought was just dumb. Um, it did take a little bit of fun design work to get this so everything cleared and, and uh, it could flip over and kind of optimized. Uh, everything just right. So the same design is used for all the different size scopes, uh, the same base design. You just got to change what basically this cover diameter is. So that was pretty slick. Um, we did have to, uh, you can see the servo mounts in here, um, like these servos were, there's these little tabs here. Uh, so there's two screws that hold it on this side. On this side, we needed that clearance. So literally we had to cut those guys off. Um, there's uh, two types of these servos. You can actually get these servos. Um, if you can see, you know, if I can show that, they actually have the metal, all metal gears, um, but then you can get one that have um, a dummy end post on there, which I thought would be kind of slick with this whole design because we could just put the cover on it directly. The downside is, is each of those are four millimeters, so you literally got to like pull that apart eight millimeters, which is quite a bit. I mean, I'm, my jury's still out because once you do pull it and put it on, it's, it's kind of nice. Um, but what we did here was we just simply made these four millimeters wider. So the servo drops in, slides over, then you screw it in, and then the whole thing slides over this post, um, and then you put in a six millimeter pin right here. So it's all really nice and compact. Uh, the total weight, I think, of all the 3D printed stuff for the 80 is something like 70 grams, and the servo, I think, is 75. Um, the older servos are only like 35 grams, so if you're really worried about weight, you could use one of the older um, plastic gears and stuff servos are about half the weight. Um, but even with this, it's still really, really light, and I don't think it's going to be a problem at all. Again, I also like the fact that it flips all the way over. Um, I'm thinking we might even put like a magnet here and put a magnet on the top of the cover, especially for the bigger, the 132 scope, that it just comes down and clicks and like locks in place. Um, so that might be a, a version 4 feature. Uh, we did do some nice cable management that um, we got the servo cable kind of runs in up and then we've got uh, uh, some little pins here and it comes out nicely before it closes um, but straight out the back. These ESP uh, uh, 8266 boards are awesome. They've got all built-in Wi-Fi and everything in them, which is great. Uh, I've got a web interface for this, so if you can compile the Arduino code, I'll throw this on. Like I say, I'll throw it all on Thingiverse uh, for anybody that wants to download it. I may even just do a bunch of different size covers for different scopes for people um, and just throw that on there. Um, so you can download that for free. Um, but there's a web interface, so you can literally just <laughs> program these things. 
um, to hook up to your local network and you go to the IP address that you give it and you have a web page that comes up and you click a button that says open your scope and another button that says close. And I might even write an ASCOM driver for it. But um, yeah, pretty slick, pretty fun little solution for 25 bucks. And I think it is way, way better than certainly anything that I've kind of seen online. Um, I do got some electro, uh, what are they, EL uh, luminance panels um, ordered, a six inch one for my bigger scope that we're going to try and see if we can actually incorporate that and do flats. Those are like 45 bucks plus the power supply. Um, but if that works, that would be a brilliant solution and still, you know, you talk in 75 bucks then for what if you go out and buy these of 600 and the ones of, like I said, that I thought you could buy or junk. So anyway, clear skies. And uh, if you like it, leave me some comments. Take care. Cheers, guys.